Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records. And this is Vinyl Monday. So welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time here. Vinyl Monday is the series where once a week I sit down and just talk about a classic album I love. If 30 minute episodes aren't your thing, don't worry. I also do Vinyl Monday in 60 seconds here on my channel, over on my Instagram, and on TikTok. This is part three of the Vinyl Monday spooky series. Woo! This is the third week of my hand-picked favorites best for playing between the Harvest Moon and All Hallows Eve. This week's album needs no introduction and no explanation for why it's part of this series. This week's album is... Black Sabbath War Pigs, I mean Paranoid. Congrats if you guessed this one. Remember, if you wanna play along, all you gotta do is check out my community tab. That's where I post my hints to what next week's album is gonna be. I host polls sometimes. You can find that on my channel. All right, let's take the plastic off. So my copy is a repress. This is a reissue on the Warner Brothers white label. My copy of Master of Reality is from the same bunch of reissues. Both are pretty bare bones. No inserts, no posters, no nothing. So let's talk about this cover art. The paranoid art was photographed by Keith, not that Keith, the other Keith, Keith McMillan. Okay, so right off the bat, this is interesting. As stated by the man himself, I don't think so, darling. Uh... What the f*** does a bloke dressed as a pig with a sword in his hand gotta do with being paranoid? I don't know. And who even is this guy anyway? The guy was Roger Brown, he was Keith's assistant. They shot this at Black Park in Wexham. If this was shot at night, then I have a feeling they trespassed to get the photo. And Roger's wearing a pig suit because yes, the album was supposed to be called War Pigs. This wasn't just a working title, this was the title up until almost the very end of production. But at the very last second, Warner Brothers goes, oh my god, we can't release a record titled War Pigs and make Sabbath change it. Ozzy says the title was changed after the success of the promo single, but Warner Brothers wanting to avoid controversy that may affect sales on the rest of their catalog is equally as likely. Backlash from Vietnam War supporters? Not ideal. Might cause an issue with singles getting radio play. Some of those Vietnam War supporters own stores and decide not to stock the album or the rest of the Warner Brothers catalog? Big problem! And that's the story of how we got paranoid and not war pigs. Opening up the gatefold, we have a group shot of the guys, also by Keefe. On Paranoid, we have the classic era lineup of Black Sabbath, fronted by the man, the myth, the legend, Ozzy Osbourne. We also have Tony Iommi on guitar and flute, Geezer Butler on bass and serving as principal lyricist, and Bill Ward on drums. Paranoid was engineered by Brian Humphreys and Tom Allum. He played the piano on Planet Caravan. He'd go on to produce for 80s heavyweights like Judas Priest and Def Leppard. In case you could tell, that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. Paranoid was produced by Roger Bain. Roll transition. <laughs> This is important to remember through the rest of the video. Sabbath was never really underground in the UK, even though they were on Vertigo, an indie label. Once upon a time, no one really knew who Sabbath were in the US. Crazy, I know. Probably because we were busy with this back to basics slash country rock thing over here, and we were obsessing over Led Zeppelin. A lot of Paranoid subject matter is a reflection of what was on the forefront of people's minds at the time. Namely, that was the Vietnam War, so you could say Paranoid is an accidental concept album. Geezer Butler writes a song with the working title Walpurgis. The guys were reading Dennis Wheatley, I guess Satanism was on the brain. Walpurgis is the Satanist equivalent to Christmas. 
Geezer didn't title his song after this for the sake of doing it, you know, to be a little edgelord or anything. He wrote the lyrics after the central motif of the song came up during a jam on Warning. This was how Sabbath wrote a lot of their songs. They'd just play something until something else came up. If you look at the lyrics and you place them against the Walpurgis title, Geezer is calling out politicians that start wars purely for power and monetary gain. Those who control the banks and send poor men off to fight rich men's fights, they're the real devils and devil worshippers of the world. He writes about them getting their comeuppance. But once again, Warner Brothers has to step in, this time saying, oh hell no, that title is way too overtly satanic. We want to play with matches, not leap into the fucking bonfire. So Geezer changes Walpurgis to War Pigs. The way Sabbath typically wrote songs at this time is Tony would start with the riff, then Bill would hop in and jam on that, Geezer would write lyrics, and finally Ozzy would take those lyrics and write the melody. This is exactly how both singles off Paranoid were written. Iron Man was inspired by this fat riff Tony came up with. Ozzy remarked that it sounded like uh, a big iron bloke walking around. So the working title was Iron Bloke. In some universe somewhere, one of Black Sabbath's greatest hits is called Iron Bloke. Geezer went, oh, we cannot have a song titled Iron Bloke. Surely there's a better term out there for this. He wrote the lyrics, Iron Bloke became Iron Man. Much better in my opinion. A song about a jilted war vet who exacts revenge on the ungrateful people he once defended. The other thing on people's minds, heroin. More and more veterans were using heroin to cope with what we might now call PTSD from what they experienced in Vietnam. It was also ravaging the music industry. Heroin had either killed or otherwise incapacitated some of rock and roll's brightest stars through 1970. And then you have fairies wear boots, a bizarro account of being attacked by skinheads while high on LSD. This is based on something that actually happened to Sabbath. I guess they were being with the skinheads. Geezer was so stumped by the fairies wear boots phrase Ozzy came up with that he had no idea how else to end the song but to have a line about going to the psychiatrist and have Ozzy do one of his little yes. The whole of Paranoid was made in just three days, June 16th and 17th at Regent Sound and 18th at Island Studios. They moved to Island because they had this fancy new 16-track recording equipment. That's where the second guitar lines over top of the War Pigs and Iron Man solos took place. The guys would camp out at the studio all day, from opening at 10 a.m. to closing at 10 p.m., just hammering sh** out. So that'd be like... 30-something hours logged in the studio total. This would be an insane turnaround time for most any other band, but this is a walk in the park for Sabbath. You have to remember, they cut their entire self-titled record in just one day. This time crunch didn't stop Roger and Sabbath from experimenting with production and funky equipment in the studio. On Planet Caravan, Ozzy is singing through a Leslie amp. Then, oh my god, I'm just gonna read to you what Ozzy said Roger did next. He used an oscillator on it. Whatever that is, it looks like a fridge with a knob on. Right, so if I remember correctly from the rumors video where an oscillator was used to help repair the damaged master tapes, it's a machine that alternates electrical current. It can do fun wonky stuff with vocals. Kind of like going, I am Iron Man, into a fan. And yes, it does kind of look like a fridge. Somewhere along the way, Sabbath realized that even with extended tunes War Pigs and Hand of Doom, they still didn't have enough songs for a whole record. So they rig up their gear, Tony pulls a riff out of his ass, Geezer scribbles down lyrics in all of 20 minutes. Yes, the soon-to-be title track of the album was written and recorded in all of two hours, just to fill the runtime of a single LP. Warner Brothers exec Joe Smith heard the acetate, and funny enough, 
it was that afterthought song that blew him away. I remember playing it and turning the sound way up and shaking the whole building. I said, I think that's the breakthrough album. The track listing of Paranoid goes as follows. <laughs> Opening up side one, we have War Pigs with the subtitle Luke's Wall, followed by Paranoid. Then Planet Caravan, and side one closes with Iron Man. Opening up side two, we have Electric Funeral, followed by Hand of Doom. Then a little instrumental interlude called Rat Salad, and the album closes with Jack the Stripper, also known as Fairies Wear Boots. Paranoid was released in September of 1970. The title track was released as the promo single in August and turned out to be a surprise success. So much so that the title of the album was changed to reflect the success of the single. They even played it on top of the pops. Can you imagine Black Sabbath on top of the pops? Cause I can't. On the one hand, Paranoid did wonders for Sabbath. They had more kids turning up to shows than ever before. But on the other hand, and they had all these screaming kids at Sabbath shows. Sure, they'd heard the songs, they bought the records, but they didn't listen. They didn't get the song's messages, and neither did parents. Sabbath were accused of being woo Satanists. Satanist. Yeah, lyrics like death and hatred to mankind out of context probably didn't help much. This followed them for the rest of their careers, especially Ozzy. The controversy essentially constructed his entire bat-munching persona for him. While Paranoid propelled Sabbath into the mainstream, it really disillusioned the guys to putting out more singles and just the music industry experience as a whole. Iron Man did get the single treatment, but curiously, not for 13 months after Paranoid's release. And three months after the release, of the follow-up Master of Reality. The legacy of Paranoid is difficult to overstate. It's the foundation of heavy metal. It is THE heavy metal record by THE heavy metal band. I'm calling this chapter of the video, So Who Invented Metal Anyway? Because there seems to be either too much or not enough debate surrounding the advent of the genre, I can't decide which. People have cited tunes by Zeppelin, even Helter Skelter by the Beatles as the first drop in the heavy metal bucket, blah blah blah, I don't agree with either of these. As far as specific songs go, I think you could cite 21st Century Schizoid Man by King Crimson, or even MC5's Black To Calm as proto-metal. The absolute earliest we could go is Iron Butterflies Got To Ignore Evil Temptation, all of this was on the heavier, harsher, darker end of the acid trick freakout music. Turns out copious amounts of LSD causes unprecedented ego death and existential horror. Who would have thought? When you think of personalities of metal with sort of a flair for the dramatic, I think it came from what is colloquially known in the 60s enthusiast circles as freak music. I hear sonic parallels between early Sabbath and the crazy world of Arthur Brown. Swear to God, Sabbath was spinning this one before they went into the studio for the first record. Blue Cheer gets thrown around as the first honest to goodness heavy metal band. Uh, this is the title that I absolutely can't pronounce, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> think Blue Cheer's sound was still too rooted in psych to fit the bill. Same with Deep Purple. In my opinion, as a relative outsider of metal, but I like to think I know my shit about the 60s and 70s, who was just enough of a departure from psych and had just enough of the heaviness to qualify as the first metal band. A little band out of Detroit, Michigan called Power of Zeus. I mentioned these guys way back in the Master of Reality episode, but I feel they're even more relevant this time around. This was their one and only record 
The Gospel According to Zeus. This album is impossible to find in the wild, but fairly easy to find a repress on Discogs. I still don't have a copy of this one, even though I really hoped I would by the time I circled back to Sabbath. Damn you student loans! Okay, so the deal with Power of Zeus is they were signed to Rare Earth Records. They put out gospel, but they ultimately fell victim to a funk label having no idea how to promote a rock and roll band. This wasn't helped by just so much happening in rock and roll in 1970 to begin with, so in their two years together, Power of Zeus never really found much of an audience outside of Detroit. I don't often hype up stuff like this, but if you're here and you have even a fleeting interest in Black Sabbath or Heavy Psych, you have to listen to Power of Zeus. Power of Zeus did things that Sabbath wouldn't do for at least another year, if not two, and things Zeppelin wouldn't do for another three. Power of Zeus does wear a lot of hats on gospel. I Lost My Love is straight up Zeppelin. I don't even know what kind of pan flute ISB nonsense is happening with green grass and clover. It gets quite proggy at times. I get the feeling that at least one of those guys had a copy of In the Court of the Crimson King. But the very end of I Lost My Love into Death Trip is spooky. It's proggy, very King Crimson, but Power of Zeus is doing things with that song that Sabbath wouldn't do until Volume 4. And Deep Purple would have eaten their suede waistcoats to come up with something as good as it couldn't be me. This band is the missing link between heavy psych and heavy metal. Hell, their original name was Gangrene before Rare Earth made them change it to Power of Zeus. That is a metal band name if I've ever heard it. And Sabbath's original name was Earth, a psych band name. Weirdly full circle, if you ask me. Enough of my psych rock tangent. What do I think of Paranoid? Going in, finally. Something that resembles my everyday listening a little more. I love the hippie stuff just as much as you guys do, but if you've been around here long, you'll know my tastes lean a little bit more firepower than flower power. Paranoid should be a what you see is what you get situation. On paper, it is, but that's the trouble with reviewing Sabbath the whole is much, much more than the sum of its parts. Sure, all these guys would have fared all right in other bands. It would have been a trip to have Ozzy Osbourne fronting Led Zeppelin. But together, they were crazy efficient with a keen ability to build off each other. These guys churned out genre-defining hits like it was no big deal. They write stuff in the van on the way to their gigs. Rock and roll shouldn't be this easy. Should it? This is one of the most stacked A-sides in rock and roll history. War Pigs, Paranoid, Planet Caravan, and Iron Man. All killer, no filler. You don't get much more solid than this. Kicking things off with War Pigs, as soon as you hear that great lurch forward, you know you're in for something good. And the fucking air raid siren? I'm practically bouncing up and down in my seat. I know the subject matter and the lyric stark imagery prevented it from being so. This thing is like the last part of Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights come to life. Witches, burning bodies, Satan rising up from a chasm in the ground. This thing is straight up apocalyptic. Musically, I think War Pigs could have done really well as a single. Hearing live recordings, it sounds a little Zeppelin, especially the guitar part. Something about that riff just has that sensibility to it. Listen to Geezer under Tony's double-tracked solo. 
Something about that feels like lava bubbling up. We all know Ozzy's greatest strength is the drama he brings to every song. He may not be dancing around on stage, but nonetheless, he's always been a performer. He commits to every single song. War Pigs is the best song on the album, one of the best songs Sabbath ever did, if you ask me. They really put their best foot forward. I kid you not, before I researched this album, I heard the title track and thought, I get why this is a single, but hmm, it feels a little half-baked. Probably because Sabbath spit the song out start to finish in two hours. It's still a good song, it's everything that set Sabbath apart condensed into a compact package. It's good, it's just not my favorite. We don't normally think pretty when we think Black Sabbath, but all of my favorite Sabbath deep cuts, like Embryo and Orchid off Master of Reality and Planet Caravan, they're pretty. This song is a tribute to one of Tony's biggest influences, Django Reinhardt. Tony's quite a talented multi-instrumentalist. I dig the songs where he got to flex that. I'm loving these production choices. The treatment of the guitar flourishes, Ozzy singing through the Leslie. They're a refreshing departure from the lead-heavy solidity on the rest of the record. Caravan feels hazy, dreamlike, like we've lifted the veil to whatever is beyond us. Even though this song is about astral projection, I think. For me, it's always conjured up images of a coven of witches dancing around a cauldron in the forest. It's smoky, wafts through the air, it's temporal like that. If you haven't heard Ozzy's guide vocals with the original lyrics, you have to. It's just as haunting as the album recording, and maybe even a little wistful. If you don't go, God bless you all! After the second verse, I don't trust you. This is one of Sabbath's signature songs for a reason. It sounds so big, it seems impossible for it to come out of just three instruments. Tony tuned his guitar to make play easier for him. He's famously without the tips of his fingers on one hand. But this tuning had the accidental result of some of the fattest guitar riffs ever put to tape. It's moments like these where I realize how essential the rhythm section was to Sabbath. Geezer came up with some inventive, exciting stuff to do behind the solos. And Bill was essential to that heaviness, especially through this breakdown. It's one of the most exciting moments on the record. All of this having been said, when I hear an album with such a stacked A-side as this, I get a little worried. My fears were confirmed. My biggest hang-up with Paranoid, it is one of the most front-loaded albums of all time. Starting with Electric Funeral, am I the only person who thinks Ozzy was just f***ing around with the spoken word lines? I know for a fact he didn't know what else to do but say, I am Iron Man, on Iron Man. Who's to say it also didn't happen on Electric Funeral? It's got the meanest riff here. I like it. This song is about the paranoia of nuclear war, once again, now disturbingly relevant. Sabbath rarely, if ever, wrote around a conventional song structure. It worked to stuff like Electric Funeral's Benefit, where we take these confusing and exciting twists and turns. We have a successful launching off into the second movement thanks to Bill and an almost jazzy thing Geezer is doing. It's another one of the most exciting moments on the album. But the structure of Hand of Doom is a little off. But the come down back to the central motif is clumsy. Rat Salad is Bill's time to shine, but it's literally Moby Dick. They are structured the same. And the lead into Fairies Wear Boots is not nearly as effortless as Moby Dick in To Bring It On Home on Zeppelin 2. You don't realize how goofy the lyrics are on Fairies Wear Boots until you pay close attention to them. But having a song about such a bizarre experience is oddly fitting to close a record about this bizarre new world we live in. Paranoid is more than just a foundational heavy metal album. It's an artifact of widespread disillusionment, dying hope in a cultural revolution. 
The 60s optimism has faded away, leaving anger, depression, and fear. Black Sabbath depicted this part through uh, this almost impossible sound they came up with. It was here long before us, and it will be here long after us. Sabbath just took us by the hand and led us to the monolith. The other essential component is the lyrics, ranging from occult to straight-up surreal, like absinthe fairies prancing around in combat boots. It's dark and heavy as hell, but there's still a little humor in it. We're laughing as the apocalypse is nigh. This remains frighteningly relevant. Paranoid is gallows humor if I've ever heard it. My personal favorites are War Pigs, Planet Caravan, Iron Man, and Electric Funeral. Remember, if you want to keep up with all of my favorites from all of the Vinyl Mondays, I have a Spotify playlist linked in my description. I update it every week. And that is it! That was part three of the Vinyl Monday spooky series, the spookiest of all. That was Paranoid by Black Sabbath. What do you think of this album? What do you think of the advent of heavy metal? Leave a comment letting me know. I love hearing what you guys have to say about albums that I love. And remember, no matter what some guy on the internet might tell you, your opinion matters. If you like what I do here, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post new episodes of Vinyl Monday every Monday morning at 11. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for... Huh. Next week's album is always over my shoulder. What? The other shoulder? Oh, mother fuck! <laughs>